Hey guys, TrueGreen7 here, and I don't think it's a secret that I actually only dislike a few Pokemon. I always try to find some kind of reason to like a Pokemon because it's a lot more fun to be positive. You should try it sometime. But I never expect anybody to like all the Pokemon I do, except for Michael from MNJTV Pokevids. That is right. Ron and I have noticed that we share a lot of the same favorite Pokemon, especially our favorite Pokemon of all time, Sceptile. However, that got us thinking, what are some of the Pokemon that we don't share the same opinions on? So while it was hard finding some Pokemon we disagreed on, in this video I'm gonna list 5 Pokemon I don't like that Michael actually does, while on his channel he'll be listing off 5 Pokemon that he hates that I do like. We're definitely aware that we're not gonna share the same least favorite Pokemon because a lot of our reasoning for those is just too personal for us to fully agree on. And while Ron is going to debate his stance on these Pokemon, I will defend them. It's a great way to show that disagreeing on a Pokemon or really any form of media is totally fine because art is, well, it's extremely subjective. You'll notice how I'm just physically uncomfortable around some of these Pokemon and there is no reason for Michael to dislike them for the same reasons I do. Some of them even have cool origins and are technically well designed. But we actually did leave out the Pokemon that are my absolute top 3 least favorite cause Michael hates them too and he can't defend them. Yeah they are a complete trash. So just to show that we have no ill will, Michael how much do you like Sceptile? So, so much. It is the best. And isn't Vikavolt awesome? It is definitely the most appealing bug that I have ever seen. You see, he's welcomed here. Number 5. Clay Doll. So I don't think Clay Doll is a bad Pokemon at all. It's actually a very good one. But it still is one of my absolute least favorites because it makes me physically uncomfortable. Wait, what? Physically uncomfortable? That sounds pretty crazy, man. Do you care to explain? I can, but it won't sound rational. Hey, hey, hey. It might. I'll be the judge of that. Well first it looks like an alien with way too many eyes. It freaks me out man. And I know it's just a dumb fear. I mean yeah but that's understandable. I also think those beaks are unsettling. Okay. And I'm also afraid of big pitch black objects. Wait, what? Yeah, it's mostly jet black with white accents and for some reason that color combination makes me feel uneasy. Dude, this is hilarious. This is probably my favorite reason for anybody hating a Pokemon Ever. It's probably just some weird primal fear that's deep, deep in the recesses of your mind. And only your mind. I know, it's very hard to empathize. So Michael, I want you to search up Mega Evolutions for Clay Doll. You see these two? When I picture normal Clay Doll in my mind, these are what pop up. Okay, yes, those are creepy. But there are lots of creepy Pokemon, and I'm sure you don't hate every single one of them. Besides, Claydol is a really interesting Pokemon, because I've used it in playthroughs before and liked using it, but it also has a really cool origin, being based on ancient Japanese extraterrestrial dolls that were brought to life is just, that's fascinating, you gotta admit. I know, I know, but may maybe in the future I'll use a clay doll in some kind of playthrough just so I can get over my fear. Yeah, I think that'd be good for your mental health. Number 4. Granbull. So my main complaint with Granbull is the fact that its fangs are inside its skin, like bones. It's not natural looking, Michael. Okay, well I think that the emphasis on its big strong jaw makes the fangs make more sense than what you're giving them. Granbull's main design focus is its large, intimidating face, and giant fangs fit really well with that. Wouldn't you at least agree that it could look slightly better with teeth that weren't inside its skin? You know, like actual tusks? I will concede that it could look better, but I think you're focusing too much on that one design aspect. If you zoom out and look at the rest of Granbull's design, it's a pretty interesting Pokemon. It's got this mean, angry, intimidating looking appearance, but it's actually really sweet and timid. It's a fairy type, which are usually very cutesy, but Granbull breaks that mold, and I just really appreciate that about it, and I think you could too. I think I generally do try to find at least one aspect that I like about Pokemon, and therefore have favorable opinions on almost all Pokemon, but Granbull's main design aspect, which are its jaws, kinda overshadow all of its positive traits. In time, I am sure its positive traits will overtake your negative view of its design such as its spectacularly hilarious fainting animation in Colosseum and XD. Number 3 Sunflora 
So putting it simply, I think its design is unoriginal. As you can clearly see, it's just a flower with a face and we have tons of those in every form of media. But it's a sunflower with a face. That's pretty appealing. Besides, sunflowers are actually my favorite flower. Well, sunflowers are actually my least favorite flowers. You know that middle part? Yeah, that, that middle, that, that thing, that's pretty unpleasant looking. You cannot be serious. Michael, why would I purposely make myself look like a coward? But I do think it may be an extension of my trypophobia, which is a very common phobia, so common that I can't show a picture illustrating it since I know there would be outrage in the comment section. But that has nothing to do with why I dislike sunflora. I understand that to many, it would be appealing, but it's as appealing as a flower with a face, and there are cuter examples of those. But they're just so happy! Oh, come on, look! Look at how happy it is! Aww! I have no problem with the idea that its smile is infectious, but it somewhat annoys me that its design is barely brought up when talking about badly designed Pokémon. And it's weak. But I never bring that up as a negative when judging Pokemon. That's just when you know I have no more things to say about Sunflora. Admittedly, its design is nothing special, but I think it's a fine Pokemon that looks pleasant. I would never use it, but there are definitely worse Pokemon out there in the world. And definitely worse grass types. Like my number two entry. Number two. Carnivine. It's creepy. Universally creepy. I mean, I don't think it's that creepy. Keyword that. I mean, it's based on a carnivorous plant. You can't expect it to be cute. I don't expect it to look cute. I want it to look ferocious, and carnivine looks like a wimp. I'm also not a fan of its color scheme. That type of green gives green a bad name. Whatever you say, true green elitist. And I think its lower body is just a mess, and it levitates for no reason, even though the Pokedex states that it walks on its vines. Okay, I will admit that that doesn't make sense, but having a Venus flytrap Pokemon does make a lot of sense, and I think Carnivine is a fine Pokemon to represent this awesome plant. And number one is... Clink Clang. So I think I noticed that a running theme of some Pokemon that I dislike stem from how I think they make me uncomfortable, lack most emotions, and just don't look like they're having a good time. And Clink Clang looks like its life is in a never-ending nightmare. I don't hate Clink, although I do think it's a lame idea for a gear Pokemon, but I do think having each evolution just be the same Pokemon but with added parts is just... lazy. They repeat the same lackluster design two more times. I get that each evolution adds another type of gear, but how am I supposed to grow an attachment to a creature that has this face? It doesn't look like it's having fun. So I actually like this line a lot more than I used to because I discovered this air of mystery around it. In black and white, Juniper says that Clink mysteriously appeared a hundred years ago. Why did they just suddenly show up? How did they get here? I want to know! And while I know having a gear-based Pokémon may not be the best design idea, it's very similar to basing a Pokemon around any other inanimate object, like having Magnemite based on magnets. Magnemite does look a lot better, but the concept is similar. But at least with Magnemite, it's pretty understandable that a magnet Pokemon will evolve by combining with other magnets. Magnets attract other magnets. That's one of the only things they do. There's nothing that makes Clink attracted to other Clinks, especially since they're genderless. But while I totally think Doug Trio is guilty of just looking like three Diglets, at least Diglett already has a pretty great design. Clink is just not worthy of being repeated twice. Hey, as a mechanical engineer, I know well that combining different gears of various diameters and teeth numbers is a very commonly used way to convert rotation speed and torque. So Clink becoming a more complicated gear train as it evolves makes a lot of engineering sense. Besides, I think the spinning animations look so smooth. Well, as a 3D animator, I do admit that the animation is pretty smooth. Now, if you want to check out the video on my channel where we talk about Pokemon that I hate but True Green 7 likes, be sure to click here on the screen or in the link down in the description below. And if you already came from Michael's channel, then it would be awesome if you checked out the video right here and subscribed if you enjoyed. Make sure to follow both of us on Twitter and Facebook, and I'll see you guys very soon.